the main intention of today's session is a demo on protocols okay uh, maybe uh, you are uh, some of the students are studying uh, in graduate and some of uh, undergraduate like that completed graduation and all right so maybe some students aware with the protocols or uh, some students are not aware okay so today we'll just uh, give the brief introduction about the protocol uh, why we are using the protocol what is mean by protocol and what are the different types of protocols are there and what is the need of protocol in the soc architecture okay these things we will know today okay uh, we are not going in depth of each protocol like a specification of each protocol okay just today we'll discuss overall introduction on the protocols okay so if you have any doubts in the middle of the session you can ask or you can uh, comment in the chat box okay so let us start the session coming to the introduction of the protocol okay can you tell me anyone what is mean by protocol first of all what is mean by protocol Can anyone? Can okay. Okay. Protocol is nothing but the set of rules. Okay, which are used to communicate between different components, different IPs, or different devices. Okay, we are using set of rules. Set of rules in the sense, like in the in terms of communication, whether it is serial or parallel. Okay, in terms of uh, number of uh, bits, how many bits have to transfer, or uh, uh, in terms of uh, duplex, okay, full duplex or half duplex, okay, like that, uh, we have to follow some set of rules, okay, that is nothing but a protocol, okay. So, in VLSA, we have different types of protocols, okay, coming to the classification of protocols, there are on chip protocol and peripheral protocols on chip is also called as interface protocol peripheral protocols nothing but communication protocol okay if you have any idea on this you can just explain uh, a few points on both of these had any idea no ma'am no ma'am Okay, on chip protocol is nothing but it is used to connect various IP blocks on a chip. Okay, there is a chip like a system on chip SOC. In SOC, there will be IPs, right? IPs, subsystems like that. So, on chip protocol is nothing but it is used to interconnect various IPs. Okay, suppose uh, some example like there is a CPU block and there is a memory block. Okay, two different IPs are there or two different subsystems are there. Okay, to communicate with these two subsystems, we will use a interface or a interconnect we can call. Okay, like a AXI, okay, or AHB. These are the protocols we are connecting to the different IPs. That is nothing but on-chip protocol, on-chip okay next suppose uh, if you are connecting with the uh, to a ip or uh, with other communicating uh, devices in that case we will use okay and coming to the peripheral protocol peripheral protocol is nothing but it is used for communication between some logic okay some logic in the chip on the chip okay to an external uh, whatever the logic is there on the chip and that to external device okay that is nothing but peripheral okay like examples like uh, PCIe bus protocol or uh, DD or bus protocol or APB protocol which is a parallel communication okay these type of protocols can be used in the peripheral okay got any idea have any doubts We'll discuss briefly then some clarity. Okay. Yes, tell. What are IP blocks? Yes, yes. I will explain you what are uh, different. 
okay let me explain uh, okay so if you see the on chip protocols whatever we have discussed these are the uh, different uh, interface protocol classification all amba protocols nothing but uh, 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 high speed protocols like ahb axi low speed like that and coming to communication protocol you already know high speed protocols nothing but usb ethernet pcie low speed like that okay so first we will discuss a brief explanation on protocol then you will get what are these ips means okay okay if you see the architecture here what is this architecture means it is a soc system on chip okay so every company uses different types of socs okay this is the basic soc which we can uh, use okay but this is not the actual sop there will be so many sub modules sub blocks uh, introduced in the soc okay so if you see the whole architecture we can call as a system on chip the whole architecture is called system on chip you are looking here one block second block third block fourth block like that okay what we call these are nothing but a subsystem okay these are nothing but subsystems in the subsystem if you see here there is a small block here there is a small block and these are the small blocks okay and this uh, subsystem we have one ip two ip third ip fourth ip like this this we called as a ips if you see here security subsystem in security subsystem what we have some jtag ip is there display ip is there hdma these blocks are nothing but ips okay so cluster of ip is nothing but a subsystem cluster of subsystem is nothing but a system on chip okay did you got the clarity now suppose now here i am communicating with a cpu subsystem to the memory subsystem in cpu subsystem what we have all the core okay core number of cores cache memory okay uh, these things uh, will have in the cpu subsystem okay these are a7 8 uh, uh, dsu all these are caches and cores number of cores according to the specification okay so now this subsystem wants to communicate with the memory how it is communicating it is nothing but interconnect okay we can call it as a interconnect or interval interface or a bus we can call there are different names okay this interconnect is nothing but a protocol okay suppose we are communicating with one subsystem to another subsystem through the interconnect that interconnect is nothing but a protocol okay so which protocol we can use here means based on your subsystem suppose here we are communicating with a processor processor and a memory controller okay processor is the high speed it works under high bandwidth memory also works under high bandwidth okay both are uh, uh, with a more clock frequency so we have to use the uh, uh, which is related to that bandwidth which is nothing but axi axi uh, works on higher bandwidth okay so suppose here we are using axi protocol okay and uh, suppose if you see here in this subsystem there are a number of ips are there small small blocks if you want to communicate with the one ip to another ip based on the bandwidth of the ip based on the clock frequency of the ip we will select the protocol if these ips works under low bandwidth okay we will select some low frequency protocol if we want to communicate serially we will uh, take some serial communication protocols okay but if you consider here this subsystem to this subsystem always processor communicate parallelly right so parallelly means what protocol works parallelly okay which protocol works with a higher bandwidth which is related to processor which makes which satisfies the processor uh, specification like that we will consider and we will or take that protocol suppose here axi 
here small protocols like a UART or I2C or SPI like that based on the uh, specification based on the need we will con we'll consider the protocol did you got the clarity now um, previously you told that protocols are like set of rules no yes a set of rule means uh -huh. nothing but what suppose here this subsystem wants to communicate with a sub this subsystem set of rule is nothing but here protocol is working under serially or parallelly uh, how many bits or in terms of a speed whether it is a low speed protocol or it is a high speed protocol okay uh, low speed means a processor works every time a, any processor works under high speed only okay suppose this processor is working under uh, 1000 mega hedges okay 1000 mega hedges and this also working under 800 mega hedges okay suppose uh, I, uh, there are three type of interface protocols apb ahb axi okay uh, in place of here i am considering the apb protocol here interface as a apb apb works under below 100 mega hedges only okay 70 to 60 mega hedges if i consider apb here will it work the processor can communicate with the memory yeah. it cannot communicate right we need to consider according to this speed according to this bandwidth according to requirement okay if you take axi then axi perfectly suit to communicate between a core core subsystem and a memory subsystem okay, okay. suppose uh, if you are communicating communicating with a less bandwidth suppose a here wireless subsystem is there security subsystem is there here we are not using any processor uh, no need to use higher bandwidth okay so th that time you can use a small interface like a uh, less bandwidth with apb okay internal ips uh, internal ips if you want to communicate serially you can use serial communication protocols like uh, I2C, UART, UART, not UART, I2C, SPI, like that. Okay. These are parallel communication protocols. Always we will communicate. This bus is nothing but parallel communication with all subsystem. So here it is required. Okay. But with the IPs, internal IP to IP, not required. Did you got the point now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Remaining have any doubts? That means, suppose uh, here there is a subsystem. Internally, you need to communicate with this IP to this IP. Okay. So then you need to follow one type of protocol. Okay. Like intra system, inter system protocols. Okay. If you are communicating with this IP to the external device, external device in the sense any microcontroller like that okay then you need to follow different protocol okay so this is the whole soc architecture in this whole soc architecture all there are different type of uh, protocols involvement will be there okay not only this type of protocol we know only few protocols but in industrial every company has its own protocol Okay, uh, according to their requirement, they will design their own protocols, each company. Okay, have any doubts? Ma'am, here, uh, what is the difference between on-chip and peripheral protocols? Yes, yes, uh, we'll discuss those things. Here, on-chip and protocol, nothing but, peripheral is nothing but, uh, on chip is nothing but uh, we will communicate uh, with the various ips okay interconnection between various ips that means within the system within the system there will be different ip blocks here right within the subsystem so that is nothing but on chip peripheral is nothing but with the internal subsystem to the external device okay like you uh, are or uh, use art usb Okay, so these are the different types.
you got the point on chip protocol we will also call as a bus protocols or a interface protocols as a whatever we are telling here uh, this is the interconnect or interface or a bus bus is nothing but 10 bit data right 10 bit size 32 bit or 16 bit or uh, uh, 128 bit okay based on your suppose apb is specially used up to 32 bit okay for ahp 32 bit 128 bit 256 like that axi also same okay but the features are different ap ahb to axi in terms of speed axi is more features also more in axi like that okay we'll discuss those features everything in the session uh okay have any doubts if if the communication between different subsystem is also a on chip protocol no? mm, yes uh, different okay. subsystem is nothing but a bus we will use right so these are uh, this is nothing but that bus uh, between yeah. different subsystems only from subsystem to external system we use peripheral yes serial uh, communication or uh, mostly serial from communication bus protocol and uh, on chip protocol is totally different am i correct man? um on chip protocol and bus protocol are similar. Both are no, same. But it's, a, it's a one of the division of the uh, on chip protocol, is, uh, uh, bus protocol. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, both are similar, I'm telling. Okay, okay but on chip protocol, uh, nothing but uh, these uh, series of AMBA protocols. Bus protocols are nothing but series of AMBA protocols because these are only the parallel protocols we have. Remaining all, if you take USB or PCIe or UART, whatever, these all are serial communication protocols. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And have any doubts? Different type is also on chip protocol, and no? Be, uh, based on your connections uh, you can use uh, different ip means uh, ip to ip we will use mostly serial communication only high speed uh, uh, protocols like a pcie okay Achha. like that if you are using a small like uh, in your laptops if you see side uh, there are usb uh, previously we have used uh, uart protocols uh, uh, like uh, very uh, low speed but nowadays we are using high speed devices right that's why we are using usb like that pcie yes, means internal uh, uh, system uh, we will use a pcie for serial communication okay okay so that was the, that are the rules we need to follow that are the protocol like uh, uh, which type of protocols uh, for different systems that thing we need to follow okay so have any okay. doubts anyone what are the protocols that we are going to learn ma'am uh these are the, like uh, you are uh, i2c spi and uh, amba protocols like apb ahb axi all this the, these protocols are being used in companies ma'am yeah. yes uh, these are uh, uh, like uh, for entry level we need to learn this okay uh, once you go to the company based on their requirement or if they have their own protocols based on that they will give training or uh, you can learn those things but as a entry level we need to learn this okay okay and what is mean by master and slave in every protocol we will transfer the data from master and a slave master is nothing but a transmitter we can call and slave is nothing but a receiver we can call okay so if you see here soc here also we'll have master slave you can consider anyone as a master anyone as a slave okay no need uh, to take only these are the master signals and these are the slave nothing is like that okay if you want to consider this as a master you can consider master to slave if you want to communicate with this cache then it will be slave or you are sending the data from this cache to this interface. Then this is the master and this is the slave. Okay, master is always the device that drives the uh, data to the slave. Okay, slave always accepts the data. That means it responds to the master. That is the master and slave. Okay. 
have any doubts? No, 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 no. Doubt, no. Okay, and these are the sub classification of protocols. As we discussed, the uh, protocols are uh, different types. Okay, so these are the sub classification of protocols. There are intra system communication, inter system communication, like that. Okay, what is meant by intra system communication? Intra system communication means nothing but if you are communicating two devices within the circuit board. Okay, within the circuit board. That means here there is a this is the board if you consider within the board there is a microcontroller and also a component adi s s1 something component is there okay so within the subsystem we are communicating with the two components there we are using intra system bus that is nothing but intra system suppose uh, examples examples are i2c spi Okay, I'm communicating with this microcontroller to this uh, using the I2C and SPI. Okay, I2C and SPI or intra system communication. Okay, by using the I2C specification uh, format, uh, uh, those things, uh, by using those things, we can communicate like this. For inter system is nothing but if you are communicating with the different systems like a PC. To your microcontroller pc is the internal system microcontroller is the outside okay so pc to the outside of some component okay so what we will use uart or usb okay usb ports are there we are connecting our mobile phones to the laptop or you are connecting some uh, uh, devices to the laptop okay so you are communicating with the pc and some external device, whatever you are uh, connecting your mobile phones or any external device like a mouse or a printer, scanner, some external device to the processor, right? So that is nothing but intra inter system communication. For that, we are using USB ports. USB ports we are using present, which are very high speed. But in olden days, we are we have used UART, USART like that okay present this is the high speed protocol we are using this one okay have any doubts the all these inter system inter, inter system communication protocols uh, are like uh, on chip only ma'am uh, here we are uh, on chip here we are not telling about on chip because uh, these are not on chip what we told on chip is nothing but interface protocols or bus protocols those are parallel communication protocols okay so but here these are the serial communication protocols we are telling about okay though uh, whatever we discuss on chip protocols there are uh, subsystem to subsystem okay here it may be a component to component or ip to ip like that Okay. Have any doubts? Okay. Next, uh, uh, based on the way of data transfer. Okay. If you see the bus protocol, bus protocol means always parallel communication only. APB or AHP, AXI. APB accepts the 32 bit data, whereas AHP 32 bit 64 or 128, 256, like that. Okay, according to its specification. So, serial communication, you know, one by one bit uh, it will be transmitted from master to slave. Parallel communication is nothing but all bits transmitted at a time parallelly. So, that is also one rule. And next one, based on the synchronization communication and asynchronization communication. Okay, asynchronization is nothing but only few one protocol is there. Can you tell me what is that protocol? First, we'll see what is mean by synchronization. Here, synchronization is nothing but there is a master and there is a slave. Okay, master and a slave works under same clock here there is a clock okay so um, uh, both are synchronous to this clock okay but whereas asynchronous means there will be no clock 
okay maybe master has different clock and slave has different clock or sometimes we don't use any clock okay so without clock how can we transmit the data from master to slave how the synchronization happens and what are those protocols which are asynchronization in nature can you tell me okay all protocols are synchronization only maximum whatever amba protocols or uh, interface protocols like i2c or spi all these are synchronization only asynchronous is nothing but yacht protocol okay yacht is nothing but universal asynchronous receiver transmitter okay yacht protocol is the first basic protocol which is asynchronous in nature okay so asynchronous means how the data will be transmitted without a clock can anybody can anyone tell as we are using asynchronous how the data is transmitted between master and slave don't had idea No idea. Proper. Okay. So uh, before that, we'll see what is mean by UART. UART is nothing but universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. It is a serial communication protocol with a two-way protocol, and uh, it trans uh, it is transfer and receive the data serially, bit by bit. Okay. Uh, UART has a frame format. Okay, like a parity bit, uh, the data bits, number of bits are transmitted, and uh, the address. Okay, how the address will be selected, how the slave uh, will be selected, like that. Okay. So based on that, uh, we will transmit the data. okay there will be first there will be start bit and there will be the data and the parity bit which is a uh, odd parity or even parity and there will be stop bit okay based on that we will transmit the data using yot protocol okay and it is a half duplex communication protocol what is mean by half duplex you may learn like half duplex full duplex duplex i'm um, only transmission or receive like only one is acquired at the uh, one time yes half duplex is nothing but uh, only uh, like uh, we can transmit from master to slave but not at a time okay that is nothing but half duplex simultaneously we cannot uh, read and write the data okay mostly all the protocols are uh, uh, half duplex only the i2c or spi or yot okay these all uh, apb also half duplex only we cannot write and read the data at a time okay that is nothing but half duplex suppose if you are writing uh, in first clock cycle then after some delay after the write operation we can write uh, read the data that is nothing but half duplex communication okay now the point is without the clock how can we transmit the data how can we make the synchronization between master and slave nothing but here we are using the baud rate okay baud rate is nothing but the um which uh, use like a synchronization between master and a slave okay we can generate the baud rate based on the number of bits okay each bit is nothing but one by baud rate okay so uh there will be standard baud rates also there are some standard baud rates like a 24000960012192200 those things uh, when we are writing the program when we move to the yacht specification then you can learn uh, everything one by one how you will take the baud rate how to write the program for baud rate and all okay so this is the yacht protocol did you got the point Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Have any doubts? Oh, no, ma'am. You can continue. No. Okay. So, yacht is the asynchronous protocol 
which is a half duplex protocol now coming to the i2c protocol i2c means inter integrated circuit okay it is also a low speed peripheral protocol okay which is used to communicate between a short distance okay not very long distance within the system to system within the system we will communicate that is nothing but intra board right so it is a synchronous synchronous means here we will use the clock okay based on the clock the master will be communicated with a slave i2c we have a uh, two type of signals scl and serial data serial clock and serial data based on these two signals we will uh, operate the i2c okay multi master multi slave multi master multi slave means we will have any number of masters and any number of slaves okay so how can you select the master if there are multiple number of master means how can we select a single master uh, that is the arbitration concept based on the arbitration concept we will select a single master from the master we will com com communicate with the slave okay so uh, because of uh, uh, synchronous and because of low speed here i2c i2c have the clock stretching concept okay clock stretching is nothing but master will work under high speed the bandwidth the, the clock frequency is uh, more but here for a uh, slave the clock frequency is uh, less okay here we will get the clock stretching concept that is nothing but how we will synchronize the both clocks which is the uh, one is the uh, high bandwidth one is low bandwidth okay high frequency and low frequency so how can we match both those things is nothing but clock stretching okay these are the important interview questions sir, in i2c protocol mainly they will ask how you will write the uh, frame format of i2c okay start conditions stop conditions and what is mean by arbitration what is mean by clock stretching these are the important questions for interview okay and coming to half duplex i already told you what is mean by half duplex have any yes. doubts no, 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 no. spi also same uh, spi also similar to the i2c only mostly both are same okay um spi is nothing but a serial peripheral interface right which is a synchronous communication interface which is communicated for a short distance okay both are same you can learn any one uh, uh, with, within these two okay okay so these are all serial communication protocols whatever we have seen these are low speed communication protocols coming to the high speed usb is the high speed communication protocol which is a serially okay pcie pcie is also very very high speed protocol we will use in the industries whatever you are seeing in your laptops uh, there will be soc right so mostly in the socs if you want to communicate with one ip to another ip we will use the pcie okay so that is uh, uh this all are high speed and low speed communication next coming to the parallel communication protocols which are nothing but amba amba nothing but advanced microcontroller bus architecture we will call okay so first one is apb apb is nothing but advanced peripheral bus protocol okay so these are used to communicate for low bandwidth devices okay low bandwidth ips like that so it is a part of amba protocol family it is a non pipeline protocol can you tell me what is mean by non pipeline if pipeline the decode uh, of the uh, first instruction as a second instruction and execution of the first instructions like uh, uh, things are uh, executed at the same time but uh, if non pipeline it's not there okay pipeline is nothing but um, uh, whatever the decoding or fetching or execution all the things uh, will be right into the memory into a single step all the things will then parallelly okay so that is nothing but pipeline pipeline means fast process okay that 
fast process is not there in apb apb is a non pipelined architecture okay so a pipeline or axi ahb those are pipelined so apb is uh, doesn't have that feature do you got the point and it is used for minimal power consumption optimized for minimal power consumption and reduce the interface complexity very less uh, complexity only few signals out there okay uh, 10 to 15 number of signals only just a clock enable signal reset signal write data write, read data write enable like that okay uh, strobe signals uh, and um, slave si error signals like that only few signals compared to the axi okay so it is for minimal power consumption and it is connected to the system bus via bridge why we are using the bridge means suppose we are communicating with a processor processor is nothing but high speed high speed means we need to use axi protocol here okay and you are communicating with a small bandwidth device like uh, any i2c or a camera module like that which is very uh, minimum bandwidth so how can you communicate with this interface we need to use apb okay so apb to axi we cannot use directly there will be a bridge where axi signals need to convert into the apb signals high bandwidth has to convert to low bandwidth so here there will be a bridge okay so like that we can communicate the protocol the apb protocol has two independent uh, data buses one for read and for write both are independent and we can write up to 32 bit only only 32 bit okay see okay. here the uh, here this is the bridge how you will communicate okay these are the high performance uh, uh, sub systems whatever we can tell the processor or core or uh, ram modules in the memory okay memory interfaces uh, the masters uh, okay these are the high speed whereas a low speed you are timers or keypads or any camera modules these are the low speed so how can you communicate here axi or ahb to this low speed apb means bridge we need to use the bridge okay we can do the project ahb to apb via bridge also okay, okay. have any doubts no ma'am okay and next ahp advanced high performance bus okay this is somewhat uh, uh, it has advanced features compared to the apb okay it is a high frequency design and a multi bus master which has a burst transfer okay burst transfer is nothing but uh, uh, we have number of write and read transfers to the master and slave continuously with n bit size okay that is nothing but burst transfer pipeline operation pipeline is nothing but fetching decoding execution everything done parallelly okay which improve the speed okay and ahb support the efficient connection of processors whatever i have shown you and it also supports uh, the data bus of 8 16 32 64 128 up to 1024 whereas apb is 32 bit size only limited okay and it can support 16 bus masters and slaves which are burst transfers okay so these are the features not only this there are so many advanced features in ahb but we cannot discuss all the things now right one whenever you are starting the project one by one each protocol you can learn okay first uh, you ought you can learn everything uh, specification programming everything you can do and then next one by one if you learn then you will remember easily and the conceptual wise also you will get good knowledge okay any prerequisite to before starting ma'am learning this protocol prerequisite is nothing but uh, verilog if you want to do designing part you can write uh, in verilog if you want to uh, learn uh, uh, the verification then you need to learn sv uvm like that okay uh, but uh, you can design first maybe as your uh, role suppose if you are going for design verification engineer then no need to design all the uh, protocols first you can design your i2c spi like that apb and then 
you can go for verification for AHBA XI like that. No prerequisites, just very long. If you have very long, then you can design from basic protocol. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. And coming to the AXI. AXI is Advanced Extensible Interface where all companies are using this. Okay. PCIe, AXI, every company will use in the SOC level. Okay. So AXI is the point to point interconnection, uh, which is a high performance uh, and a high speed microcontroller systems we can connect. Okay. And um, it is a, it works under high bandwidth and the low latency. Low latency is nothing but a delay. Okay, delay is very less and bandwidth is very high. Okay, and the XI is most popular in a AMBA interface because of high bandwidth, high speed and all. Okay, high bandwidth in the sense, suppose uh, the clock, uh, whatever I told you, APB works under 60 to 70 mega hedges only, APB. Whereas AHB works below 100 mega hedges. Okay. Whereas AXI, if you take 64 bit bus, it runs under 200 mega hedges. Okay. And then AHB will be 400 mega hedges based on your number of bits. Okay. Number of bit size and all, it will depend the clock frequency. Okay. Compared to the AHB, AXI has high high speed okay so today we have seen what is mean by protocol and how we are using the protocols in the soc or a uh, system to system or a system to external device okay and what are the different types of protocols are there i think you got some idea right do you got the clarity yes ma'am okay What about others? Have any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can ask. Ma'am, it's better to learn protocol concepts after system Verilog or uh, directly after Verilog we can learn. No, no need to learn after system Verilog. Uh, you can start after Verilog only. Okay. Uh, because you're starting with your uh, like that, right? Uh, if you learn simply first your tie to see, then after system Verilog, you can concentrate more on AMBA protocols. Okay. AMBA needs system Verilog, ma'am? No, nothing like that. If you want to do verification part, then system Verilog uh, UVM needed. If you are designing only a uh, design part, then Verilog is enough. For APP okay. or AHP or XI, whatever project. What are protocol? Okay, yeah, whatever protocol or project, if you are doing only design, Verilog is enough. If you want to go okay. for verification, then system Verilog UVM needed. Okay. Uh, okay. Will the classes will be conducted uh, live, ma'am, or any recording will be provided? Uh, based on your, suppose if you are emergency, you are not. Uh, um, like you are not attending the classes, then we'll provide the recorded session. Otherwise, uh, live sessions. Total how many uh, hours from total protocols cover? Total protocol, uh, yacht, it will take uh, two to three hours. I2C also two to three hours. APB also like that. AHP, AXI, it will take some time. Okay. All the uh, projects also included, ma'am, uh, designing projects regarding these protocols. Yes, yes. Both the design and bridge. verification. Yes. Bridge project, uh, it all number. Yes, I2C, sorry, APB to AHP bridge, everything. You will tell, discuss about the verification concepts also, ma'am? Yes, yes. Both design and verification. Design is for your uh, some basic APB up to APB. If you are concentrating verification part, AHB AXI verification part will be discussed. Uh, but we don't know the system very long now, ma'am. Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, you can uh, concentrate on design first. After system very long, you can learn uh, verification part. Okay. Then you will discuss uh, design also, ma'am, uh, for higher yeah. protocols like AMBA protocols. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. For all, we'll discuss design first, then verification. Ah, okay. 
okay uh, design in the sense uh, in verilog also we can write the test benches okay both the design and verification uh, in the initial level we can write in verilog also okay ma'am yeah uh classes are only on sunday and saturday ma'am yes so protocol uh, weekend sessions will be there so acha okay